Welcome to the audio laboratory. Well, there are lots of different analog audio signals. Your, Your voice, voice or, any or any other, other instrument, instrument picked up by a microphone, microphone, the output of a synthesizer or a drum machine, or the current induced by the magnetic pickups of an electric guitar or bass. These are just a few common examples of analog signals. And before we can do anything with them inside of a computer, they need to be converted into digital signals. First, let's get ourselves an analog signal. Let's zoom in, so we can take a better look at the signal. If we input this signal into our audio interface or sound card, it will at some point pass an analog to digital converter, or ADC for short. The AD converter takes a measurement of the analog signal and translates it into a number. That's called sampling. The converter does this tens or even hundreds of thousands of times per second. Let's increase the sample rate. A higher sample rate allows us to capture more details, or higher frequencies, that a lower sample rate might have missed. That will of course take up more memory. Today's lowest standard for high fidelity music is 44.1 kHz, which means that the digital signal contains 44,100 samples per second. What we are left with is this heap of data points, and that's essentially all a digital sound file is. These points are used in the computer to recreate our signal or at least a very close representation of it. But what happens if the level of the incoming analog signal is too high? An AD converter has a limited range of operation. If a measurement is outside of that range, it will be assigned the closest value possible. And herein lies our problem. The highest peaks of our signal are simply cut off. This is called digital clipping. And sadly, the result of this is not the kind of musical saturation or distortion you get when pushing a tape recorder or a tube amplifier to its limits. Quite the opposite. Digital clipping can be described as harsh, ripping, and unpleasant. So, let's take a look at all of this in the digital audio workstation. There's a guitar signal coming into input 1 of the audio interface. Let's record it onto this track. As soon as the guitar is played a bit louder, the recording starts to clip. The door even tells us so with this red clipping indicator. Let me reduce the volume of that recorded file a bit. As you can see, you can't rescue a clipped recording simply by turning the volume down afterwards in the door. It is permanently damaged. That's why it's so important to properly set the recording levels beforehand on the audio interface. You want the signal to be loud enough that it is captured with a high detail across a wide range of the AD converter, but not too loud so that clipping happens. So, let's try again. I'll reset the clipping indicator by clicking on it. This time, I will actually check the signal levels before hitting record. This still clips, so I turn down the gain knob on my audio interface for input 1 until the signal reaches a safe level. I'm not trying to exactly hit the maximum level with my recording. It's always good to leave a bit of headroom. The performance could always become a little more dynamic than you first anticipated. A common recommendation is to aim for an average level of minus 18 dBFS. Remember, this is about capturing a good digital representation of your analog signal. If you want to make it louder or completely mangle and destroy it, you can always do that later in the process. And trust me, we will. That's it for this flashcard. Don't hesitate to leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe and ring the bell. Beep, bunny.